One of the great strengths of After Effects is the ability to animate effects over time, to make things change over time using keyframes. I'm going to show you how to animate the transform properties in this lesson. And just keep in mind that by the end of the lesson, you may feel a little bit overwhelmed if you haven't worked with keyframes before. But this is something I'm going to cover over and over again in upcoming lessons. It's just one of the most important things you can do in After Effects, and I will reinforce this as we go forward. So to follow along, go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, and open up 0502 Animating. This is the project we worked with in the previous lesson. This time, though, we're, instead of just changing properties, we're going to have those properties change over time. I'm going to start off with the text and the solid layer first, and all I want to do is just change their opacity. I could open up the Disclosure Triangle like this, and then open up Transform, and work on Opacity that way, but it's much easier to work only on that property by using a keyboard shortcut. So let me close that back down again. So to work with Opacity only, I click on the Text layer like so to make it active to select it, and then I press the T key. That's the shortcut for Opacity, if you can remember it that way. There's S for Scale, P for Position, A for Anchor Point, R for Rotation, and T for Opacity. We'll press the T key to open up Opacity there. And notice next to it is a little stopwatch. That's the toggle animation switch. So I'm going to pull my current time indicator to the point where she starts blowing bubbles right about there. Okay, And that's where I want the word bubbles to come on screen, to appear on screen. So I'm going to turn on keyframes at that spot right there. And right now it's 100% opacity, so it's not really coming on the screen, but I'll fix that in a second. And I go forward to the place where I want it to be done coming on screen, let's say about there. And I can add another keyframe now. I can click this little diamond right there. It'll add a keyframe. Both of them are the same value, so nothing will happen when I go from one to the next. I'm navigating here with these little triangles on the left-hand side. These allow you to navigate from one keyframe to the next, like so. Well, now that we're back to this keyframe, I want to change its value to zero. So I'm going to just scrub this one left to zero, like so. So now that text will come on gradually, like so. Now it came on kind of fast. I'd rather have it come on a little bit slower. So the distance between the two keyframes determines the speed at which the change happens. These keyframes are noting change over time from 0 to 100. There's 0, that's 100. I can cause it to take longer by simply taking that second keyframe and moving it farther like that. Let's see here. Comes on a little more gradually. Nice. Well, now I want to do the same thing to the background there. So I'm going to open up that layer. Going down to here, I'm going to click on it to make it active and press the T key to open up its opacity as well. And I want its opacity keyframes to match this guy's opacity keyframes. Now I could do that manually by, let's say, taking my little controller here and going to that first keyframe and then adding a keyframe for opacity here and then navigate to the one to the right there, there and putting a keyframe there and putting all those values. But who wants to do all that work, right? So I'm going to go Controller Command Z a couple of times to undo that. Instead, what you can do is you can copy and paste keyframes. If I click on the word Opacity, it'll select all the keyframes for the Opacity property. There they are. They're all selected. They turn yellow when they're selected. And if I copy them, I can paste them down here. So I'm going to copy them by going to Edit, Copy, right? That would be the standard way to do things. But notice the keyboard shortcut here in Windows Control-C. And on a Mac, it's Command-C. So hardly anyone uses menus to copy things anymore. What you want to use are the keyboard shortcuts. So these guys are selected. I do Control c here in Windows, or Command-C in Mac, and now they're copied. I want to paste them someplace, so I'm going to go down to this layer and click on Opacity there to say this is the thing to which we're going to apply those keyframes. I have my current time indicator right there at the right spot, but just for the heck of it, I'm going to put it in the wrong place. I'm going to put it over here a little bit. And now I want to do the Paste command, which is Control or Command v Victor, Control or Command v It'll put the keyframes where the current time indicator is, not exactly where I want them to be. It would look like this if we brought them on. The text would come on first, and then the background would come on afterwards. Not what we want to do here. Well, with those keyframes selected, I can move them around as a group like that. What I want to do is I want to move them so they line up here. Well, if I hold on the Shift key as I get near these other keyframes, Shift, it'll snap. They will find other things and line up with them. That's what the Snap tool does. It looks for things to line stuff up. So it lined right up there. So now those two guys work together. How nice. Here we go. Comes on gradually. So the keyframes, again, are marking the beginning and the end of a change. The beginning here is 0% opacity. The end is 100% opacity. Excellent. Let's close these guys down, clicking those disclosure triangles. Now I want to play with the adjustment layer, and this is going to take a little bit more work. Open up the adjustment layer, and I could look at its transform properties one at a time, which is not really what I want to do. 
Instead, I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to open up those transform properties. So I'm going to click on it to make it active, to select it. I want to work with opacity and scale and position, all three of those guys. So I can open them up if I press the keyboard shortcuts for them, right? So if I go past a T, the T, there you go. Now I want to also display scale, so I press S and that replaces opacity. So there's another way to bring on multiple properties. I have scale now. If I hold on the shift key and press T, that'll add opacity. If I hold on the shift key again to add position, that'll add it as well. So you have three things visible now, all right? I want to have the adjustment layer move onto the screen and also want it to appear on the screen. I'm going to add the hue saturation effect to this. We'll talk about effects in much detail later, but I'll show you how to do this right now. Click here over here and search for hue by typing in H-U-E, and then drag the hue saturation to that layer right there and let go. And then I'm going to change this to minus 13 degrees, minus one three, and that'll kind of warm it up a little bit like that. Let's make it a little bit redder. So now we have this effect there, but I don't want it to come on immediately at the beginning of the clip. I want it to come on a little bit later. Let's say we'll have it come on right about here. So I need to have opacity here for the adjustment layer set to zero there. So I turn on the keyframe there, set the opacity to zero. You don't see it at all now. Go forward a little ways. Now I'm going to set it to 100%. Now it's going to add a keyframe when I change a property at a new location, at a new time. There's no keyframe there now, but the moment I change this from something other than zero, it adds a keyframe. See so how the keyframe popped on there? So now that little background will come on gradually, gradually making it warmer. It may not be obvious at 13% there, but it does make it a little bit warmer there. But instead of having it for the entire frame, I want it to eventually move down to just her. So I want the position and the scale to change. Now, typically, if I just change this like that, the scale might be enough, but notice it'll be a little off center. I want it to move the position as well, so I'll undo that. So to do that, I'm going to turn on keyframes for both position and scale at the starting point of this change. So I turn on keyframes for position and scale to have those guys have a starting point of full frame and also the proper position there. And now I want that to change over time, so I'm going to move to the place where I want that to have changed. First, I'm going to change the scale by dragging it in like that. Then I'm going to change the position. Now, if you think that, okay, is it going to kind of bounce around when it comes on the screen, but all it does is just take those values that I put there. It's not going to do that funny business in between where I was moving it around and sliding it around. It just takes the beginning and the ending points. Let's see how that looks now. As it gradually comes on screen, gradually gets warmer, and then gradually moves just to her face like that. We could also could have changed the scale by bringing it just to her face instead of top to bottom like that. But nevertheless, we did some changes there for both the opacity and for the scale and position had them take place in different times. Now let's go off to the last one here, and those are those bubbles. Kind of fun. Open up the bubble shape layer. We're going to talk about shapes in other lessons, but I'm just going to give you a quick look here. We're going to open up the contents and work on the individual contents transforms instead of the entire layers transform, because I want to work on each individual bubble. Open up contents. There are three ellipses here. If you click on the top one, that's the one up there. That's the one that I want to come out of the little bubble thing first. I want that to appear just as she starts blowing bubbles. Right about there is where the first bubble will appear. So I'm going to open up the ellipse property group. And inside there is a transform property group. It has all those properties you'd expect to see plus skew and skew axis. I want to first change its position. So I don't need to worry about keyframes yet. I just want to bring it down here to get it located at that starting point. Then I'm going to change its scale. Now, if I drag here, it'll change the aspect ratio as well. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it over here by just scrubbing the scale here to have it go down uniformly, like so. And now I want to then set keyframes for the beginning point. So I'll turn on keyframes for position and scale. I also set keyframes for opacity, set that to zero at that point. There we go. And now I want to have that thing appear quickly, like so. So I'll have it appear quickly, make it come up to 100%. And as it comes up, I want it to move. So I'm going to go over here a little bit farther, about that far end of the video. I'm going to take that guy and I'm going to move it just by dragging it. I want to drag it up to here, up to the top of the screen like that. I'm going to change the scale by just scaling it up like so. Maybe even take it farther off the screen like that. So what's going to happen is it's going to go from there to there and gradually increase in size and also just become visible. Now the little blue thing around here, I'm going to click away so that doesn't show up. Got these borders here too, they're showing up because this wireframe is clicked. I'll turn that off so you won't see any borders for that one. Let's see what happens here. 
Out comes that bubble and off it goes to the top of the page. I want to do that for the other two. Now this seems like a lot of work, right? But I'm going to select all of these keyframes here. I'm going to scroll down so you can see all of them, all these two, four, six keyframes. If I marquee select them, if I just take my mouse here and just drag to marquee select them, you can tell they're selected because they're yellow. If I copy them by going Control or Command C, they're now copied. I'm going to go down and apply these to the other two ellipses. So I'll take ellipse number two and just select it. Don't need to open it up, just select it. I'm now going to position the current time indicator to where I want it to come out of that little bubble machine there. So I'll put my current time indicator here. Now I'm going to paste the keyframes to this one by going Control or Command V. Now those keyframes have showed up. They show up as little dots here because we need to open it up to actually see the keyframes. I'll open it up so you can see them go to transform. And there they are. So they'll come on later. Close that down. Hang on a second. Let's see how those guys look now. Let me click away so you don't see that little boundary box. I'll click away from this clip. There we go. Out comes the first. And out comes the second. That works pretty well. Let's do the third one now. So I'm going to close ellipse three, ellipse two. I've already copied them. I don't need to copy them again. Click ellipse one now. We'll have it come out a little bit later. So I'll go Control or Command V for that one. We've now added all these guys. I'm going to go up here and close down the disclosure triangle for this and click away so you don't see those bounding boxes there. And now we'll go and see how this whole thing plays out. One, two, and three. There you go. And I could have had them go off screen even farther or whatever, but then I think you see how that works. So that is how you use keyframes to animate transform properties. We're going to talk about using keyframes in many, many other effects. So if right now your head is kind of spinning with this whole keyframe business, keep in mind we're going to go over this again and again, and I'll remind you how to do this as we go forward.